reflect it against a mirror. Focus all of that heat on one area, send it through a power system, and you've got a renewable way of making electricity. It's called Concentrating Solar Power, or CSP. Now, there are many types of CSP technologies. Towers, dishes, linear mirrors, and troughs. Okay, have a look at this parabolic trough system. Parabolic troughs are large mirrors shaped like a giant U. These troughs are connected together in long lines and will track the sun throughout the day. When the sun's heat is reflected off the mirror, the curved shape sends most of that reflected heat onto a receiver. The receiver tube is filled with a fluid and could be oil, molten salt, something that holds the heat well. Basically, this super hot liquid heats water in this thing called a heat exchanger, and the water turns to steam. Now the steam is sent off to a turbine, and from there, it's business as usual inside a power plant. A steam turbine spins a generator, and the generator makes electricity. Once the fluid transfers its heat, it's recycled and used over and over. And the steam is also cooled, condensed, and recycled again and again. One big advantage of these trough systems is that the heated fluid can be stored and used later to keep making electricity when the sun isn't shining. Sunny skies and hot temperatures make the southwest U.S. an ideal place for these kinds of power plants. Many concentrated solar power plants could be built within the next several years. And a single plant can generate 250 megawatts or more. Australia is the highest contributor per head of carbon emissions of any country, any person in the world. We are the highest per head and um, I'm ashamed of that and we should be doing something positive about it. This model has been constructed to demonstrate to people how we can generate solar electricity even at night. Because everyone says that solar power and wind power have a problem because at night the sun doesn't shine and the wind isn't always operating. But this model shows how that can be overcome. Must be getting pretty hot up there now. Oh, well. So the way the model works is the, the mirrors are focused up onto the, uh, the heat collector at the top and that gets quite hot. So even just on a little model like this, it gets very hot. And then the heat from that is stored and used to generate electricity. The idea is to have a lot of these all around Australia and a lot of wind generators as well. And then at times, at different times, you might have a lot of wind power being generated, at other times more solar power in different locations. And so if you spread them around, you average out and you get a really good power supply for almost all the year round. So if I run through the way it operates, it's this. This tank here, is the cool salt tank and salt is the secret of the way this works because salt at around about 200 degrees centigrade melts and it's just like ice and water it melts it becomes liquid that salt is then pumped up into this tank in a real existing uh, system and in this tank here the concentrated sunlight from all these mirrors heats the salt up to 650 degrees centigrade the salt then goes down this side and is then stored in a hot salt tank. And the hot salt tank is really well insulated, rather like a, a thermos flask. It'll only lose 1% of its heat every day, so it's extremely well into, uh, insulated. Most important is that this tank acts like a battery, but instead of storing electrical energy, it stores heat energy, which it can do much more effectively. And when you need electricity, the hot salt is pumped out through the heat exchanger, which is just a boiler, and that boils water, and the water then drives the little turbine. The water then boils and drives the uh, turbine, and then that generates electricity, which comes back through here to our little town and out into the grid. However, for about 1% of the time, you can have a situation where you run out of solar power and wind power, and so then they have this down here, uh, you'll see there's a biofuel station, so you uh, 
get a whole lot of agricultural refuse piled up there as biomass and, uh, and then burn it to that 1% when you can't generate enough electricity from wind power and solar power. So it just fills in the gap. So what we've done is we've rigged up lights on this thing so that if we're demonstrating at night to people at meetings or things like that, we can show what's happening with the, the lights. So the power, the cool salt goes up the tower, the hot salt comes down the tower and gets stored in the tank. And then when you want electricity, the hot salt comes out through the heat exchanger, which is just a boiler, and back into the cool, cool salt tank. The heat from the salt then generates steam from water and the high pressure, high um, temperature steam drives a turbine and then the steam comes back through this little arrangement which condenses it back to water so it recycles through the system. So the salt cycles